Today we're going to be talking about the healing powers of art. My guest is Joya Paul. She is a visual artist based in Toronto. Joya, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Now you're a visual artist, you're a multimedia artist, uh, and even maybe more specifically an encaustic artist. That's right. So tell us a little bit about your art and uh, what encaustic art is and the process and the history. So encaustic art is the ancient art of painting with molten wax. We take layers of wax, heat them up, and fuse them with layers below it. And it comes from the word encausticos, the Greek word encausticos, which means to burn in. So I actually use a number of mediums with the wax. I use photography, collage, drawings, found objects, embed things, whatever I can get my hands on. And that's what the medium allows you to do is really play and discover new things. I feel that's sort of where I always wanted to go with my art is to convey that dreamlike, ethereal, visual landscape. This was a, the medium that enabled me to do that. Now, encaustic art, I mean, it's an ancient art. Uh, has it really been lost and this is something you picked up then? Because it's something I've not heard of before or seen before. So. Well, I think 3,000 years ago it was something that was um, done in, in Egypt and there's um, Fayan portraits that are still um, vibrant today. It acts as a preservant. Now, over, I guess, the last 2,000 to 3,000 years, it hasn't been that popular. It's hard to do because you have to keep melting and fusing and heating, but now with modern technology, instruments, and you know electricity, it makes a big difference. You can actually do a lot more with the medium. Uh, as an artist, you're self-taught. That's right. You didn't go to school. You just watch videos. I did. I um, I started watching a few videos of painting acrylics, and then I did a workshop with a wonderful teacher. Her name's Heather Gentleman. She was um, at the distillery and she'd asked me to join her studio space after six months of taking classes with her. This was about nine years ago. Heather really you know, taught me a lot and then I also took it upon myself to keep practicing my craft, keep learning, keep... I, I'm constantly researching, I'm always playing with different mediums and I don't stop. It's, it's all consuming, it's all I do. I know that you like to, um, to paint birds, specifically owls, and you have a hummingbird series that you're working on. That's right. I, I believe birds are very spiritual creatures. They're really majestic, magical to look at. What I enjoy about symbolically about birds is the unity, oneness. It's also going into freedom. The thing that's interesting about birds as well is that when you see a flock of birds fly together, you wonder, how is that all happening? It's happening is there intuition? Is there some kind of code or language going on between them? There's actually one leader in the flock that determines the course and the direction and all of them follow suit but it's done in such quick succession that it's invisible to the naked eye. So I find that very fascinating. It's just, it, it's an analogy of how I think the world is in some ways. I know that you have a gallery and studio in the distillery district. What a great location. Yes, it's been fantastic. We opened up last year. It's called Second Door Studio. I have exhibition space there, so I exhibit my work with two other artists. I opened it up last year, and also we run workshops out of there. So I teach mixed media and caustic workshops. You began your career working in the in the finance field. That's right. Um, and then one day you decided that you wanted to be an artist. So what was that moment? I knew early on as a child that this was something I was going to do. I knew that there was something in me that I had to share. Ten years ago I started a journey of healing and um, really delved into learning more and more about different mediums and encaustic caught my eye. And it's been an amazing set of circumstances and serendipitous events that have led to me being able to transition. I couldn't have done it without the help of many people. You, you were inspired to become an artist and you went through a journey of depression. Yes, I had, I had some moments of, of um, anxiety, depression, because I think I was always living for the what's next, what's next. When am I going to finally be happy? When am I going to be settled? When you live in that space, there's no room for you to grow. The journey of art led me into a very healing, quiet stillness 
that I still embrace today. I think it's something that I would love to share with other people, this practice, because you can really help yourself in so many ways by tapping into something creative. It doesn't have to be visual art, it could be anything. Anything that is gets your mind out of your headspace and into your heart space. I think it's just getting out of that mindset that you can't do it. Just play, have fun, let go of fear. Fear is what holds us back in so many ways in life. And it held me back for so many years until I finally realized, you know what, I need to surrender. Surrender and just let things flow naturally. And it was when you surrendered that your son came into your life. That's right. And you adopted um, your son from India. That's right. In 2006, we began the process of adoption. It felt like the longest wait. And at points, I was ready to just throw in the towel. I just couldn't understand why I couldn't be a mom. I couldn't understand why I couldn't. So much love to give. Why can't I give that ch to a child? Once I was in that realization that life's too short, it's going to happen have to have faith and so that's when I got the phone call four years later uh, about my son and we picked him up in 2010 we met him it was love at first sight there there were some challenges and issues as there would be with um, older child adoption but it didn't take long at all six years later we are very very happy he's extremely well settled he's um, 12 and a half and almost 13 actually and he's just a wonderful sweet boy that I can't believe he's mine. He's my soulmate. He's, he's what has really completed me. If you can then share with our viewers one uh, tip for success, uh, anyone who's walking in your shoes, something that they can learn from you. It's just to keep doing it. Keep practicing. Keep going. Don't let anyone hinder you or stop you from your belief in yourself. You have to do that. Number one is have faith and believe in your abilities. Not just being an artist, it's about being you, the best you that you can be. And I truly believe also in asking for help. And that's it. And thank you for being here and sharing your story and your journey. And I wish you all the best. Thank you.